Welcome viewers to the online series of lectures for the course of Dynamical Systems. The course code for this course it is MAT 323. You will be provided the, the lecture notes along the video lectures and everything will be will be described in 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 detail in the in the lecture materials okay but here is a list for suggested readings list of suggested readings for the course MAT 323 1 ordinary differential equations by Jack K L Number two, it's, uh, it's Introduction to Dynamical Systems. Introduction to Dynamical Systems. Lecture notes. It's a set of lecture notes, not a book, by Stefano Luzzato. Stefano Luzzato. Okay, and the third one being notes on dynamical systems. Notes on dynamical systems by J. Rombos. I will essentially follow the third third set of lecture notes okay for this course okay so before I define a continuous dynamical system I need a few terminologies to begin with okay the first one to begin with is the concept of integral curves so let me erase everything here. So we start with the concept of integral curves. A very important concept for the study of dynamical systems. Okay. But before we do that, we need the concept of flow of a vector field in Rn. And for that, we need the concept of a, of a vector field, of course. Okay. Let u, so we will be using two u's. One is small u and the other one is big u. Okay. So let big u be an open subset open subset in this Euclidean space of dimension big N or you denote it by R to the N. So how we define open subsets in Euclidean space have been discussed before in the introductory lecture. Okay, so go over the introductory lecture and see that how we define open subsets there. Okay, and I be an open interval in R. Okay, so you have an open subset big U in R to the N, an open interval in R, okay, like AB. Something like this. All right. Now we consider a vector valued function. Vector valued function. 
meaning that there will be a function f from i cross u to r to the n okay so an element here in r to the n is a vector that's why it's called a vector valued function because the image will be a vector in r to the n under f okay so this is this guy this function is defined on this domain i cross u this is defined on i cross big u of course and that is given by so for the clarification of notation f is a function of this arguments of this argument t comma x1 comma x2 comma all the all the way up to xn this part is taking value in u and this t is taking value in this in this um, interval i okay and the result is a vector in r to the n so a represented uh, represented it with, with with an n tuple okay the components of this vector are f1 t x1 all the way up to xn f2 t comma x1 x2 all the way up to xn all the way up to fn t comma x1 x2 all the way up to xn so where each of these components f1 f2 all the way up to fn are real valued functions real valued functions defined on i cross u meaning that if you pick up fi where i runs from 1 to n this will be a function from i cross u to r that's what we mean by real valued function on i cross u okay good this f is called a time dependent vector field on u this f is called a time dependent vector field on u on the open set of r to the n okay so why we are calling it a, a vector field and why it is time dependent because at each time t belonging to this interval i so time is taking value in this interval i okay and each special point denoted by an n tuple in r to the n and each point x1 x2 all the way up to x and this n tuple belonging to r to the n so each time t in the interval i and each n tuple x1 x2 xn belonging to r to the n right f of t comma x1 x2 all the way up to xn this guy this guy gives a vector right vector f1 f2 all the way up to fn in r to the n so if you if you take any t from i and any n tuple x1 x2 xn in r to the n then f of t comma x1 comma x2 comma x1 xn will be a vector given by this n tuple okay this is the reason 
we call f a time dependent vector field on the open set u of r to the n. Good. Now, let us pick up a sub interval j from the given interval i. I erase everything here. Let us pick up, let us pick j being a subset of i and open sub interval. So now a vector valued function, we again are taking a, 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 vector, a, a vector valued function, a vector valued function. By vector valued function we mean a function whose image is a vector, right? A vector valued function, this is denoted by small u, this is a map from this sub interval j to the open set big U, the open set in R to the N, okay. So this map is designated by small u, not big U, and big U represents the open set in R to the N, okay, given by e small u of t, y t, because it takes value in this subinterval j. So u is a function of t. And what is the image? This image is in this open set U, which is a subset of R to the N. So this guy has to be a vector in R to the N, right? And that we denote by x1 of t, x2 of t, all the way up to xn of t, okay? So where where each of these components is a real valued function on j, meaning that if you pick up xi, where i goes from 1 to big N, it's going to be a function from j to r. All right? So this curve, um, well, this is, this function is called, this function u, this function u is called a uh, C1 curve in U, okay? It's called a C1 curve in U if all the components of this vector, all the components Xi, like I have said here, from J to R for I 1 to all the way up to N are differentiable differentiable with continuous derivatives continuous derivatives x i prime t. Okay. So each function, each component function x i has to be differentiable and the, the resulting derivatives after differentiating these functions has to be continuous as well. Okay. In other words, this guy, these functions have to be continuous for i from 1 to all the way up to n. The vector, so since they are differentiable with continuous derivatives, the vector, we can talk about this vector, right? u prime t whose components, u prime t is again a vector valued function whose components are x1 prime t x2 prime t all the way up to xn prime t okay this vector has a name called the tangent vector called the tangent vector 
tangent vector to the curve. So, so when we are talking about a tangent vector, say that this is a tangent vector, but where it is tangent to some curve at certain point, which curve is it tangent to? Say this curve it is tangent to. So this guy u prime t is supposed to be the tangent vector to the curve u that you started with. u and at what point? At what point? At so this curve, this vector u prime t is the tangent vector to the curve u at the point u of t equal to x1 t all the way up to x and t and this u of t belongs to this open set u of course right from the very definition of this function small u and this is going to happen for all t in the sub interval that we started with okay so this is how we define a tangent vector to a given curve Okay, good. Now we ask ourselves an important question. Let me write down the question. A question. Given a point P0 in this open set U of R to the N and a particular time and a time t in this sub interval j that we use to define the curve the curve which is nothing but a function from this sub interval j to the open set u of r to the n okay all right so now, um, so we are given a point P0 in the open set U and we are given a time, a particular time, which is nothing but T0 in this, sorry, excuse me, I want this time. I want this time t0 to be in the interval i, the interval that we require to define the vector field. Remember that f was a function from i cross u to r to the n. So I want time t0 to be in that interval, okay, not in j, of course. And p0 is a point in the open set u of r to the n if these are this is the case then we are asking if there is a c1 curve u from j to big u We are asking if there is a curve like this defined on some sub interval, sub interval j of i containing that particular point t0 containing t0 such that. The curve goes through the point t0, p0, that is u of t0 is equal to p0, and this 
equation is satisfied u prime t is equal to f of t comma ut for all t in this subinterval j so this is a question that we are going to try to answer okay so what are we actually asking for so we are asking if we are given a point p0 in in this open set big u is it possible to find a c1 curve through this point p0 at time t0 such that its tangent vectors are prescribed by a given vector field f okay so it tells you that we, we first of all we are given a vector field f okay and we are given a point p0 in this open set u and we are also given a time t0 in i and this vector field is a function of course from i cross u to r to the n okay now we are asking if there exists a function u from a sub interval j to u big u where j is a is an sub interval of i if there exists a curve like this which goes through these points right uh, which goes through this point p0 okay in other words we want u at t0 should be equal to p0 this has to be satisfied and and the tangent vectors the tangent vectors to that curve should coincide with this vector field f okay so is something like this something like so if i want to draw a picture for this situation it should be something like this i i'm given a vector field like this okay and there is a point here right and I I want to find a curve which goes through this point and whose tangent vectors coincide so the, well I don't know the drawing is not precise so I am given a vector field like this So I'm trying to draw a picture, uh, a smooth curve whose tangent vectors at coincide with the given vector field, okay? Something like this, okay? So, so the, 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 the picture is not quite precise, but this is what we are looking for. We are given a vector field and we want to draw the curve through which the tangent vectors are precisely the given vector field okay and so uh, this is precisely the question okay so if, if this is the situation then we say that xt equal to ut for t in the subinterval j solves the following initial value problem okay this is the curve the following initial value problem dx over dt is equal to f of t comma x and x of t0 is equal to p0 
we number this equation by equation number 2. Okay, so if this is the situation, if we can find such an integral curve, we say that that curve precisely solves this initial value problem given by equation number 2. Okay. Okay. Good. Here, note that x is equal to x of t denotes the vector valued function remember this is the vector valued function that we that we discussed while defining a curve right And so th there's this is synonymous to u of t actually, and dx by dt is nothing but the ta tangent vector, is the tangent vector at t. That is dx by dt is nothing but x1 prime t, the derivative of x1, x2 prime t of t, the derivative of x2, and all the way up to xn prime t, the derivative of xn of t. Okay. Okay, so now, if a C1 curve, okay, now, Now, go back to the, uh, the C1 curve U from J to big U. If, if this C1 curve satisfies the IVP, you remember the IVP that we wrote in the previous screen? Uh, this was the IVP, F of T comma X and um, X x at t0 is equal to p0. This was the IPP. Okay. So now if this curves, if this C1 curve, uh, C1 curve C1 curve satisfying this IVP exists, we call it an integral curve. of the vector field of the vector field f going through the given point p0 at time t0. Okay, so this is the definition of integral curve. So integral curve is something that you find from the given vector field f and from the given initial condition of the IVP, okay? Okay. We'll see that, we'll see that for an integral curve to exist, for an integral curve to exist, It is sufficient that the vector field F be continuous in a neighborhood of the point T0, P0. To exist, it is sufficient that the vector field F be continuous
in a neighborhood of the given initial point that is the point t0 comma p0 belonging to i cross u okay in other words if so you're you're given this point t0 comma p0 from the initial value problem okay so you fix this point and then you if you see that the vector field f is continuous in in a neighborhood around this point, meaning that the vector field F is locally continuous around this point, you conclude that the integral curve exists. Okay, now we'll see an example for that. I think I'll take a break now and then I'll get back to you with, with the first example. Okay, thank you for attending the first segment.